Welcome to Life in the North 40. Winter is upon us. Thanks for joining us on today's video of our top 10 tips on how to winterize your home and property. Some of these tips you may have done in the past and some may be new to you. Number one, your vent registers in your home. We have a multi-level house. We have almost half our square footage is in our basement. Because the basement is subsurface, it's naturally cool. So in the summer, we don't want to waste energy pushing air conditioning into the basement. So we close our vent registers. But in the fall and the winter, you want heat down there because it's already cool. To, you, know, you don't want to break pipes and have issues down there. So you open the vent registers, pushing heat into the basement. Number two, changing your ceiling fan direction. In the winter time, you want your heat to be able to go down to where you're sitting and not rise to the ceiling. So your fans have a switch to be able to change directions on them and you want it to be able to go the direction to push your heat down. Number three, fireplace maintenance. Just make sure that you sweep your chimney and clean your fireplace boxes out each season, both for wood stoves and fixed uh, fireplaces like this. I would have a licensed fireplace inspector check your fireplace every season too, just to be safe. Number four, put away outside items that you don't want to get ruined from the snow or snow removal. This includes lawn and patio furniture, mm -hmm. and then other items such as decor, planters, solar lights, anything that might be in the way for snow removal. Exactly right, hon. Now for the outside stuff. Number five, heat tape and gutter maintenance. Some of you have a lot of rain for your winter, not just snow and ice and rain like us. We had a lot of rain last week and I had a lot of overflow in one of my big gutters. So prior to your rain or winter season, make sure you clean those gutters out so you have good outflow down your downspouts. I also have gutter covers that helps keep the debris out of your gutters. Heat tape, one of the things I learned living in the mountains here at our house is as your snow and ice sit on your roof, the sometimes as that melts your eaves are not insulated so you have up above your roof a little warmer and then it gets to the eaves the part that hangs off your roof that isn't insulated and then it freezes so as these icicles drip down onto your walkways it's a slipping hazard uh, extremely slippery and dangerous to get ice on your walkway in front of your entries your exits and entries also it damages these ice dams can get up under your shingles and cause expansion contraction and, and mess up your shingling and your roof. So the heat tape prevents that. It'll melt that edge. And then in our case, runs right into our gutters and down our downspout. Heat tape will keep that whole edge of your eaves melted, warmed up so that stuff will melt, not turn into huge ice dams and icicles causing the damage. Heat tape is electric, it's plugged in. So you just have to string it and we'll show you that. Number six. Blow out your sprinklers, insulate your hose bibs or hose spigots, and make sure your hoses are put away for the winter time. Here's our hose spigot. Just got a little rubber loop. You just connect it either over the handle or the spigot, threaded portion itself, and you just cinch it on. It's got a little rubber strap that just cinches on, and this is styrofoam insulated and it just sits next to your house, keeps that from freezing. You do not want to leave your hoses connected. I just drain them, roll them up, and I put them into my shop for the winter in storage mode. And you want to blow out your sprinkler system. I just use my own air compressor. I have a very small sprinkler system just in our front yard, and I just blow all the pipes out so they do not freeze below the frost line underground. I just take the hose on here, it's not connected. Connected to this adapter, same as on your tire. And we have kind of a hokey little sprinkler system here. Connect this hose to it, and this pressure from our compressor blows our sprinklers out each circuit. In some certain municipalities, it's required that you get a certified person to blow mm -hmm. out your sprinklers to show that they didn't have backflow into the water system. Number seven, rotating the necessary tools for the winter time and putting the summer stuff away. So we have a lawnmower, so we put that away in our shop and we bring up our snow blower. That way it doesn't take up too much space in the garage for both implements. And then we also bring up our snow shovels and get our plow ready. We have to plow our own driveway and our private road. We share that work with our neighbors. So we make sure that our ATV has the chains on the back tires for plowing, as well as attaching our snow plow. Rick does a run up on the snow blower to make sure it works, make sure all the shear pins are in working order. And we also put chains on the snow blower tires. 
Number eight. Number seven leads into number eight, which is winterization of your specific equipment. Two categories mainly. One is draining the fuel out of the carburetors of these things that are not used during the winter, like your lawnmower, your brush cutter, weed whackers, maybe even your chainsaw. So that doesn't gum up your carburetors. So an example of draining the fuel out of your carburetors Equipment that have a pitcock, which is just a valve that shuts off the gasoline from the gas tank to the carburetor, make it very easy. Because that means you could keep the gas in the tank with stable in it for long-term storage, and then at least drain it out of your carburetor so it doesn't sit during the winter months and just clog up your carburetor. You always want to run ethanol-free premium gasoline in all your implements. The reason is ethanol is what makes the fuel get gummy and gum up your carburetor during long-term storage. So I'll give you an example how we do this, or I'll give you a demo of just running this fuel out of the pitcock. It's running right now, the pitcock is on. I just, without turning it off, just to shut it off, I wanna run the fuel out of it. So I just turn that to the off position. Also on this particular generator, it's got the breather up here on the fuel, I'll turn that to off. As soon as this runs the gas out of the fuel line, and in the carburetor, it'll just run out of gas and stop. We'll just let it run and shut off. The next category is putting trickle chargers on items that have small batteries to keep those batteries from dying over the winter and fully charged. Number nine. Maintenance and checks on your backup generator. And if you don't have a generator, you should buy one. We lose power out here several times every winter. So your maintenance and checks on your generator, obviously do a run up, start it, make sure it's going well. If it needs a, a fluid change, you do that ahead of time. You don't wanna mess with that stuff when it's super cold and icy out. Also keeping that thing protected and having a nice storage cover over it to keep you know that thing from getting worn out in the weather, etc. Okay, turning that on. Also, if your generator has uh, electric start with a battery in it, you want to start it periodically, even yeah. during the spring and summer, to keep that battery charged and to run the belts and, and keep it lubricated. We have our backup generator connected to propane so that we do not have to put gasoline in it. It runs off the propane that's run into our house, which makes it really nice and convenient. And it, it's a clean burning fuel. We have a link listed below for a good multi-fuel generator on Amazon. Number 10. In our scenario, we have some things that are specific to us. You may have a different lifestyle or setup. We have chickens. Some of the things we have to do for that is keep their water from freezing. We'll show mm -hmm. you that. Also, we keep them warm in the winter by having an automatic closing door and protected okay. from predators, as well as a heat lamp on a timer. In addition, we have an external shop that we keep up and running all winter because we have a, a gym out there. Plus, I need to do work projects, work on the vehicles. I store my snow equipment as far as my plow vehicle down there, our ATV. So we keep that at a minimum temperature of 40 degrees so we can keep that bathroom running for the gym and all of our vehicles in good repair through the winter. We also have a transfer station that takes the sewage from that shop and pu pushes it up to our septic that's a little higher. So that needs to stay up and running and not freeze. So I have heat lamps in there running on an extension cord to keep it warm and from freezing. So right here is that transfer station. My shop is right behind us. The septic field, the septic field is kind of right up there. So because the shop's a little lower, all the sewage uh, from the bathroom, full bath in the shop is pumped up to that field. I have it protected by just a simple tarp just to retain the heat and protect the electric riser here. Inside here is the, under here is the transfer station and here's the plumbing with electrical riser that the tarp protects. And in here I have two heat lamps that are running off an extension cord of the shop. That keeps the transfer station flowing and from freezing during the winter. In addition, we have a water valve or spigot running off of our well that's exterior out by our shop for like an RV or exterior work. And I turn that off at the main valve during the winter for since we don't use it. When it gets really cold, another thing we wanted to show you is our attached garage here for our main vehicles. We will put some heat in here and this is a cheap and easy way to do it. This heat disc right here 
non-flammable, no open flame. Just plug this into an outlet and just leave it on here in the garage. It has high, low, and medium setting, and it brings the temp up to a reasonable temp inside here. So that's good to do. Just as an additional precaution, if vehicles are coming in and out, bringing cool air in here, and then they're melting snow and ice, this helps to keep it warm in here, dry them out, and keep them melted. Thanks for watching our top 10 tips for winterization for your home and property. If you want to learn how to prepare your car for an emergency this winter, watch this video right here.